Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another exciting night of NBA basketball. With the first pick, the Detroit Pistons select Cade Cunningham from Oklahoma State University. Did Chandler again? Oh, what a block by Max Seal! My goodness! The Pistons are digging in. They got the depth. They got the big men. They got the better basketball team. No doubt about it. There's Jaden playing the passing lane. Sky's a jam. Dunked and the crowd loves it. Pistons need a three and they have just under three seconds to do it. Here's Chauncey Phillips. Here it is. He's got it. He's got it. Chauncey Phillips hits the three. Overtime. Amazing. Out of bounds. Detroit Basketball. Pistons fans, welcome back to another edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast part of the Believe Network. I'm your host, Mike Ingolano. Joining me this week is the lovable, the excited, and the freshly awoken Jasper Apollonia. <laughs> Jasper, how are you doing? Oh, you know, they say early to bed and early to rise makes a man something, something, and something. And I am certainly something, Mike. So You are certainly something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm doing well. Uh, you know, a lot of news, actual news for the Pistons on the first day of free agency. Uh, maybe not everybody is so excited about it. Uh, um, I was working most of last night uh, while things were going down. And uh, boy, it seems like people are not super thrilled with the direction the Detroit Pistons have decided to take um, so far in free agency, Mike. is uh, Or am I just completely crazy? No, no, I, I think your uh, assessment is pretty accurate. We're going to get into all of that and more. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor for this week's podcast, and that is Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds and line matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available right from your phone. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Get in on, on the action and use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. Yes, let's get into some of the tumultuous things that have happened in free agency, which has been um, sort of at a standstill now with Damian Lillard and James Harden kind of hogging the, uh, or well, they're sort of the blockade that is not letting the rest of the moves come down. Uh, the Sixers and Clippers have been very quiet. Uh, so we wait for those, those moves to happen. Um, but some things have happened and some things have happened with the Pistons. One of the earlier moves uh, that happened might have happened like two o'clock or so, right right before free agency got started. The Brooklyn Nets, I almost said uh, New Jersey, something is wrong. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets traded Joe Harris and some second round picks to the Pistons for basically nothing, essentially nothing. Uh, the Pistons will get a 2027 second round pick via the Mavericks and a 2029 second round pick by the Bucks. Essentially, this creates a very large trade exception for Brooklyn. Um, the 31-year-old Harris had 7.6 points and shot 42% on threes last season. He is an expiring contract. This is the final year of his deal. He's due uh, about $20 million for the 2023-2024 season. So, uh, oh boy. Um, it was not <laughs> the Brooklyn Nets forward that we thought Detroit was going to go after. Um, it seemed like they were all in on Cam Johnson, who did go for four years, 108 mil, uh, to stay with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, but the Pistons essentially used their cap space on an expiring shooter. Uh, this kicks the can down the road a little bit farther to next offseason, where they're once again going to have more cap space. They get a couple of picks in it as well. Um, not the move that I think people were expecting out of the gate. Um, Jasper, what were your initial thoughts on this trade? Because I think there was some excitement at first, and then it turned into, oh, this kind of eats away at nearly all of the cap space 
uh, or at least a healthy chunk of it that was expected to be used on uh, maybe some higher impact players. Yeah, I, I think the proper reaction is somewhere in the middle, Mike. And and I don't think it's like a home run trade. As you said, they literally gave up the least they could. I believe it's like $110,000 uh, for Joe Harris. And don't get me wrong, like Joe Harris has his utility. He is an excellent shooter. He's, I mean, not just an excellent shooter. He's one of the best shooters in NBA history. We're talking about, about a guy with a career 43.7 um you know mark from from three point land a guy who has shot over 47% multiple times in his career he's led the league in three point percentage multiple times in his career on good volume and let's be honest that's something the pistons need the pistons need shooting especially with the team that they have set up right now one that's built around Sar Thompson, Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran all four guys who are not proven three-point shooters, um, e- even if we do have excitement around their ability to shoot the ball. So I-, I think for me, the disappointment comes when you don't sign Cam Johnson. But when I look at that deal that he got, I was willing to go to $104 million for Cam Johnson. He went for 108 So in my opinion, he was off the table at the price I wanted. Jeremy Grant re-signed with the Blazers for a staggering $160 million. And these, I, I understand the frustration about continuing to kick the can down the road with your cap space, but like, do you really feel like Cam Johnson and Jeremy Grant are the guys that were going to take you over the hump? Forget like into being a contender into the playoffs this year, if you had signed them. And, and I think that you could make the argument that they were, um, but the price was too high. It is what it is. And I can understand the frustration when you don't go out there and get your guys, but like that is the game you play when you tank, when you play the flexibility game, like it doesn't, it's not like you get to just be like, Oh, well we had flexibility, but now we're giving it all up because we want this one guy to get us like, no, you, you have to play it as a long-term game. That's how it works out because you need to have things fall into place. So this is the risk they've always been taking. And I understand why Pistons fans are upset, but look, Joe Harris got, had a really devastating ankle injury two years ago. It definitely sapped him last year. He was far less effective. He's not going to be a great defender by any means. He's not really going to give you much other than shooting, but boy, oh boy, will he give you shooting and you need shooting. And you can see how he fits into this Pistons lineup, whether it's as a starter or off the bench. Um, I I think for me, it's like a very, very, very solid move. It's like an A minus move. You got a good player for nothing and it's not going to cost you, um, you know, cap space long term. It's not going to cost you assets. I don't really see the downside of this deal unless you're one of those people champing at the bit to pay Jeremy Grant $160 million. I don't even know if the Portland Trailblazers are chomping at the bit. This is a move to keep Dame appeased uh, in Portland. But, yeah, uh, the kick in the can down the road thing is – it's unfortunate because I feel like uh, I feel like the fan base has heard, heard that song and seen that dance for the last couple of years. Um, we'll be optimistic. Joe Harris played 74 games. That's the most he's played since 2018-19. He's played 69 games for two consecutive seasons. He played 14 games in 21-22. 7.6 points per game is his lowest since he was a Cleveland Cavalier. Um, But the shooting numbers are still good. He's not going to be asked to um, do much more than shooting, as you alluded to. He's going to get, or at least play alongside, guys that can get downhill, uh, get to the rim, ideally collapse the defense. Uh, he'll have plenty of opportunities to take and make three-pointers. Um, the Pistons were a horrendous shooting team last year, particularly from deep, and they got him for nothing. I know it's really unfortunate that he eats up, you know, uh, a, 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 like two-thirds of your cap space, um, and it does open things up for you next year. And that's a tough pill to swallow because I I don't know how much more 
<laughs> Pistons fans can take. Um, and, you know, there are going to be more teams next year that have a bunch of cap space, including the Indiana Pacers, um, who went out and got Bruce Brown and gave Tyrese Halliburton a insane contract, too. Mike, um, were you trying to pay Bruce Brown $22 million ooh, a year? Um, there is no way. Uh, How much did Zan Musa that. make? How much did Zan Musa make in free agency? I, right. I mean, it's it's just crazy. But I think the optics are poor, especially when there were you know higher hopes. And getting Joe Harris is is fine. It, it's not going to move the needle that much, and I think fans kind of expect it. But if he stays healthy, he is a viable rotation player who can hit threes. Um, 42.6% last year, 46% the year before, 47.5% the year prior. I mean, he's a good shooter. Um, is he Cam Johnson? No. Um, but you're not going to have to pay him for as long as you would have with Cam, and it keeps your flexibility heading into next year. But I think it's still going to be a relatively unpopular move, especially if he does run into health problems again he is 31 years old so i mean it's it's tough but you got him for nothing so and 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 if you're out of the playoff race and he's playing well and you want to flip him for something younger and better um you have that option as well i doubt that that's going to happen but we'll see it's it's a flexibility move um and people are gonna be unhappy with that but It is what it is. But, I mean, Mike, this is what happens when you do a full teardown, roster teardown rebuild. Like, I I understand that people are frustrated with it, but, like, this is what you wanted. Uh, I believe it was, shoot, who was it who said it? I think it was, I think it was Rod Beard who said, most y'all can't stomach a rebuild. And, like, these are the people that called for a rebuild. That is what happens. You put your fate in the hands of the lottery gods every year when you rebuild. I see people complaining, well, I I don't like the team that they've put together. Where's the shooting? That's what happens when you slide four spots in the lottery. And that is a risk that you take when you are in the lottery year after year. Even if you have the worst record in the league, you have a 48% chance of getting the fifth pick. We've seen it happen twice with the Pistons now. So I, I... I don't understand how people who can call for a rebuild can really be bad with where the Pistons are at. They're still in a position where they have flexibility. They still are in a position where they're finding out what they have for them from their young players. And this is not me being a trust and Troy slappy. I'm just saying what the reality of the situation is in this case. So I, I don't know. I, that to me is like, you got Joe Harris for nothing. I can understand that you're disappointed that the Pistons didn't get more, but like if you wanted a rebuild, you can't then, you know, get cold feet and be like, we got to spend $120 million on Cam Johnson. I I don't get it for me personally. It seems extremely inconsistent. So. Well, there is a level of frustration to all of it too, that, you know, will probably dissipate once the season begins and, we'll just have to re re, you know, evaluate things as, as, as the season progresses. Um, there are going to be nights where Joe Harris, assuming he's healthy is going to look like an absolute bargain because he is going to have other ball handlers and other high usage players around him that are going to allow him to have space to shoot and have opportunities all over the, all, all over the three point line from the corner to the top. Um, and he is going to just shoot the lights out a handful of games. I'm sure uh, we've seen him do it and that'll probably dissipate. But again, that's, that's dependent on health. Um, it's a fine move. People are going to knock it because it's another Troy Weaver uh, low impact move and continuing to kind of push the, the win now moves into the future. Um, and I'm sure that Aaron has plenty of thoughts on this and maybe he's, silently steaming about it not on this podcast but um well that but that's fine like it's okay to criticize troy weaver for kicking the can down the oh road. sure absolutely. that is fine like dude there 
people pretending like the front office was not coming out and saying 2023-24 is the year that we're planning on making the playoffs, you know, seeing if we can make a run. People acting like that hasn't been the case for three years now are delusional. They're lying to themselves. They're, they're we've at- published published an apology yes. like i'm sorry <laughs> like you're not getting past this it a hundred percent troy weaver has sold you a false bill of goodness on this and yes he deserves criticism but at the same time you can't see you know what i mean you can't also beg right. him to ruin what he's doing here uh, those two things are not mutually exclusive so i yeah aaron should be steaming i'm not happy with it i'm absolutely not i feel like i've been sold a false bill of goods at this point but just because he, you've been he sold wheeled that, he wheeled bogdanovich out there and said i'm gonna stay here because i believe in troy in the moves yeah, they're, to make they are bring, season. they are bringing in guys that is what boyan bogdanovich was told Told us he was told. So, like, acting like anything else is the case is not true. It's it's a false narrative. But that doesn't mean you should kill what you're rebuilding here just because you said something three years ago. Uh, not being able to pivot is also a really, really bad uh, um, habit for a GM to have. And look, Mike, we're talking about Joe Harris shooting. Uh, he's not the only player that the Pistons acquired for very little yesterday. And like nothing. he could, yeah, really for nothing, uh, especially by Troy Weaver's standards. Uh, you know, we the Pistons also get Monty Morris, uh, one of if not the best backup point guards in the league, uh, from the Washington Wizards for a second round pick. And considering that they got two second round picks in the Joe Harris trade, they've actually come out of yesterday somehow by also offloading Balsa Copravitsa's uh, contract for two point one million. They have somehow come out of yesterday with Joe Harris, Monty Morris, a second round pick and $2 million. And what they've given up is nothing. Yeah. They've it's given nothing. up essentially so, nothing. Um, the wizards in that trade create a $9.8 million trade exception. Monty Morris slides into the, basically the remaining cap room that the Pistons had. I think the Pistons have about 330 grand left in cap space. Uh, still have the seven point eight million dollar mid level. Um, Monty Morris is twenty eight years old. He averaged just about ten points and five dimes uh, a game. Shoot, shot forty eight percent from the field, thirty eight percent from three for a pretty pretty pedestrian Washington team. Seemed like the Wizards were going to end up moving on from at least one of their guards because they also acquired Tyus Jones and they acquired Jordan Poole. Um, so. I'm surprised that not uh, not other teams went in on Washington to try to get more because I feel like the, the Toronto Raptors could have used a point guard. Um, they didn't go after Morris either. Uh, and now the Pistons have several guards as well um, with Morris, with Killian Hayes, um, with Sasser. So now with Monty Morris... Um, a good backup point guard. This kind of eats up the rest of that cap space and the Pistons got him for nothing. Um, there will be plenty of time to talk about what this means for the rest of the rotation, particularly the point guard rotation. Killian uh, the Hayes? Guard rotation in general. Yeah. What this to- <laughs> Wandong Tigers. Yes. Uh, I was waiting for, Somebody in the group chat or or Czar to put up the Adam Silver get ready to learn Chinese meme, um, but I I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen because Sasser might start the year in the G League and he's kind of seen more as a two guard as opposed to a point guard. He's definitely more of a more of a shooter um, than I guess a typical point guard of of his role. Um, so maybe Killian lives. But... Morris though Morris is one hundred percent a point guard. Yes, like a, he's a he point is. guard, and I I really like what he can bring to this team. He's definitely smaller than Killian Hayes, that's for sure. Uh, but dude, he's a Flint native. Like this guy loves loves the state of Michigan. We love him back. Uh, it's great to have like this hometown guy who protects the rock. I mean, dude, this he's never averaged more than one turnover per game. This is a guy Correct. who doesn't turn the ball over. This is a guy who shoots very well from outside. 
uh, yeah, not insanely great or anything, but like he can shoot a little bit from outside. Uh, he is not a great scorer by any means, but he's going to be coming off the bench for you. And what he can provide for you alongside the other guys you have there now, especially if you're combining him with somebody like Joe Harris, um, I think that can be a, a absolutely wonderful combination off the bench, as well as Alec Burke. So, yeah, we we will figure out what this guard rotation is going to look like. It is very muddled right now, but this is one of those in a vacuum moves. In a, mac in a vacuum, trading for Monty Morris, I love it. Uh, practically... Who knows? I think it causes some problems on this roster. But yes, um, we're now at the point where the Pistons basically only have the MLE, the, the mid-level exception left, Mike. Um, is there anyone that you're looking at in, in free agency that's still available that you're like, I wouldn't mind trying to see if this guy will come over for, for seven and a half mil? That's a good question. I, I definitely have a couple. So All right, I mean, all right. Why don't I'm you more than ahead. happy to give you a second to, yeah, to take yeah, a look sure, at, sure. you know, I, I think for me, um, look, the, the Pistons haven't addressed their, their power forward issue in, in free agency or in the draft or via trade right now. I, I think if PJ Washington, he really kind of, that's a weird situation for me. Um, him and in, in, in Charlotte, I think PJ Washington, if you could get him on an under market deal, I think that would be fantastic. The problem there is that he is a restricted free agent. And so if he's going for seven and a half million, you kind of think that Charlotte would match that. Uh, another former Charlotte guy that I would also think is actually probably more available is Jalen McDaniels. Uh, they traded him to Philly. He's an unrestricted free agent i want to say and i think jalen mcdaniels would be a lovely option for them at the small forward position six foot nine he's got really good size there excellent defender both he and his brother are, are very good defenders uh he can also shoot a little bit not like an amazing shooter he, he wasn't great shooting the rock last year but in the in the years before that he shot okay i think he would be a nice piece Torrey Craig. Torrey Craig has been a player that has been talked about coming to Detroit. Absolutely fits the mold of what you'd want from an MLE guy. Uh, he is like 6'9", about 32 years old. Another guy who can shoot the rock, play really good defense. I think he would fit tremendously. And then there's also like your dart throws. You, you know, maybe TJ Warren. Maybe TJ Warren has something still left in the bag. Maybe Darius Baisley can finally put it together, although I have my doubts there. Um, you know, there there's definitely players that are going to be available for the Pistons in that kind of, you know, MLE spot. Um, I, I don't think you're getting a Malik Beasley for the MLE. I don't think you're getting Christian Wood, nor necessarily would you. No, pr probably not. And, you know, there's some other, like, outside guys that maybe might be in the mix, like Kelly Oubre or Dylan Brooks. Jay Crowder, but you have to assume they might go for a little bit more. So for me, if I'm looking at it, I think if I could get one of Tory Craig, I think if I could get one of a um, a, a, a PJ Washington, I mean, Grant Williams, it's not going to happen, but I'd be happy with one of those guys. I think there's a lot of options available to Detroit as this cap space around the league uh, kind of dries up. We have some breaking news, Jasper. Oh, oh my. From Damian Lillard's mouthpiece, that is Chris Haynes. <laughs> um, Chris Haynes reports that Damian Lillard has officially requested a trade from oh the Portland Trailblazers. Um, that is according to Chris Haynes uh, of TNT and Bleacher Report. Uh, so a large domino has just fallen. Oh man, I am glad we are not a Blazers podcast because <laughs> we, we might have to end it right here and now to go have ourselves a little cry, Mike. Oh right. my. So that Damian Lillard, or I'm sorry, that Jeremy Grant contract, of course, is not finalized until July 6th. I wonder if that uh, is no longer on the table uh, due to Dame's request. This is what the Miami Heat have been waiting for patiently. Um, but he have officially requested a trade out of Portland as of this morning. So wow. that well, is, maybe, uh, 
Maybe you oh. can get Jeremy Grant for $110,000 too now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a domino that has now fallen. And with James Harden sort of being the other piece that is in the unknown, I know the Clippers mm. have been very interested. You know, the Pistons have to, have to do something. They have to do a consolidation move. They brought in two players. They move none. Um, so there has to be something else that's happening. Uh, whether they try to box up all their misfit toys into into a nice you know package and move it for like nothing um, to a team that maybe wants to take on a project in James Wiseman or is willing to pay Isaiah Stewart or wants to take on Killian Hayes and try to you know resurrect his career you know whatever that is uh you have you have yes and then you could give them bogdanovich as well and you know try to try to give them something of value they have to do some sort of consolidation move and you know there's a lot of we're about to have a lot of movement with lillard and with harden seemingly inevitable um trade opportunities the pistons could slide in as a third team and start to you know move some salaries into position to, you know, to make moves work. Um, that's how these things go. It's how the other James Harden trade went with Cleveland ending up with Jared Allen. Yeah. So. And, and Mike, we've, we've talked about that for, I mean, since that trade went down, we've been talking about really, that is what the Pistons should be doing. That is the most effective use of the Pistons cap space. In my opinion is not spending on free agents, but being able to absorb contracts with that cap space. They just did it with Joe Harris. Um, it will be very interesting to see if they can work something out here because there is, go <laughs> with a contract the size of Damian Lillard's and now with the Grant situation, uh, there is going to be a lot of moving pieces and there's going to be a lot of money moving around. And when there's that much money moving around the league, you need an extra team to facilitate things. So I think now the Pistons are in a great position this is the hard part. It's like now you've just traded for Joe Harris. So you have less on the table. Um, you still could, you know, move him. You could wave him. There's a lot of things that they could do here. Uh, the, the breaking news aspect of this definitely makes it a little harder for us to come up with hypotheticals in this moment. But yeah, this is, this is where this is the opportunity. Exactly. Like you've just said, Mike, this is where you need to pounce. This is where you need to find, the team that has to give something extra up in order to make the salaries work like Cleveland did with Jared Allen. And hopefully that is the type of consolidation move that takes you up a notch. Yeah. Um, and th there are plenty of salaries that the Pistons have that they could help provide some additional assets uh, to a team like Portland. I mean, Miami has been the team that has seemed all in on Dame and, um, Philadelphia has also expressed some interest, and we know that Daryl Morey loves to go star hunting. You know, if, if if there's a trade that can be made that, you know, sends Lillard to Philadelphia, Harden to the Clippers, and the Clippers give up, you know, stuff and things to Portland and um, Ooh, stuff, stuff I love and stuff. things. Well, I don't know. Stuff is one thing, but things, I mean, that's a bit much. Right. It could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> um so I, I I do think there's an opportunity for the Pistons to pounce um, and just acquire players or send out players. That, that'd be ideal. I mean, and the other interesting thing that we haven't really touched on that we can is that 2020 rookie extensions uh, were eligible to be announced at midnight. Um, Isaiah hmm. Stewart's was not announced. In fact, I don't know if anybody's has. Um but Isaiah cool. Stewart didn't have an extension announced. You know, is is he a player that the Pistons just say, yeah, you know, he's maybe our most valuable non-Jalen Duran big. Maybe we can leverage him in a in some sort of trade to, just to get rid of the log jam. No, I mean, there's there's got to be some sort of trades coming soon, Mike. Like there, like you said, there has to be consolidation. As of right now, their guard rotation doesn't make any sense. 
I, I mean, you could slot Joe Harris into the small forward, but like, Jesus, I, do you want to? Is that really something you want to do with Bogdanovich of the power forward? I, I don't know. To me, there, there needs to be some consolidation. You're still missing a power forward. Like, I don't care how you acquire this power forward, but you need a power forward on your roster that is not Isaiah Stewart. I'm sorry. Like, there, there has to be a backup plan there. Um, so, yeah, I there's a lot of moving parts still in play here, Mike. I am not by any means thinking that this is like us recording this podcast is where the Pistons free agency ends. Uh, I think that there's probably another trade coming. I almost certainly there must be. There, I um, there yeah. has to be. And I assume that there is going to be an MLE signing as well. Uh, and if there's an MLE signing, well, that means that there's an additional player on the roster that you're going to have to get rid of. So uh, there is going to be things that you're going to have to look at. I think that the players that are on expirings, I hate to say it, like Alec Burks. Um, I know Boyan still has another year, but like he is definitely an asset that teams would like. Uh, he's a guy yep. that can definitely sweeten the pot if you're a team like Miami that doesn't really have good draft picks or young assets to give up. In, in a potential Damian Lillard trade. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts still in play here, Mike. And, and while I'm okay, I'm, I'm kind of neutral about where the Pistons are at right now, because I do think that there's more coming. I still like, I think they're in a good position and they've kept themselves. Oh, sure. I think they kept themselves in a position of flexibility, even, you know, now with this Damian Lillard news, while also improving the roster for basically nothing. So I, I think in that sense, like you have to at least give in a vacuum, you know, when you take the context into account, it changes. But in a vacuum, I think yesterday you have to give their moves both like solid A's. Oh, yes. In a vacuum, sure. In terms of team building, um, I yeah, mean, <laughs> it's harder to forecast what that's going to look like throughout the season and into next year. Um, and a caveat for, you know, for all of these signings, nothing is official until July 6th. These are just agreed upon contracts and numbers for players. Mm -hmm. So like that Jeremy Grant contract may, I mean, it's gotta be pulled at this point. I don't know why he would want to stay in Portland for a rebuild when he just left Detroit that was rebuilding. Uh, you know, it's hard to turn down that amount of money. Maybe he's like, cool, I'll just hang out in Portland and make a, a boatload of money and <laughs> get paid well, an obscene amount in my age 34 or whatever season he's going to be in in the final year. Um, or it but becomes a sign fine. and trade. Like it, or, all goes, it could become a sign and trade. Too. That's Who true. That's true. Who knows? That's true. Um, Sham Sharani of The Athletic also just said that the Brooklyn Nets are one of the teams in on Damian Lillard as well, which I still don't quite understand i mean dame and mikhail bridges is good um you know kim johnson did just sign or has agreed to sign uh his four for 108 contract and maybe that could be used um but the nets and the heat were uh the most prominent suitors in that so we'll have it's to gonna keep... get messy it, it it is it is already kind of messy um it has been messy in portland for a while uh, just kind of like wizards uh, west of a really good player and they just can't sort of get out uh, from like one good playoff run. You know, they're continuing to chase that one good playoff run when uh, when they went to the Western Conference Finals a few years back and got smushed by the Golden State Warriors. So wow. if Might. something happens, we will be all over it. If something happens with the Pistons, we'll be all over it rather. Um, hopefully they can sneak in. Jasper, anything we have about eh, like four or so minutes left. Anything else before we wrap up this edition of the podcast, this free agency edition? I just wanted to say, you know, Pistons fans might be hungry for more, but Mike Angulano is eating good at the slop trough tonight, folks. <laughs> the slop, yes, if only Twitter would work. The slop is in the trough, and Mike is going to town on it. We love that for you, Mike, really. Um, yeah, no, I, I, like I said, I anticipate more moves coming for the Pistons uh, as we advance in free agency. Now that the Dame news has come out, like that is almost certainly a possibility. Things are definitely in flux. Uh, like you said, 
offers can be pulled and trades can be rescinded and it has happened before this would not be unprecedented by any means so keep your eyes open uh keep your ears to the streets and uh don't don't give up all hope you don't have to do the twitter spaces where you burn everything to the ground yet folks we we have a little time take a little patience not much i'm running out of it too but a little yep. patience a little bit of patience and uh if anything comes down the pipeline that involves the pistons uh you know we'll we'll grab our mics and do a little uh emergency podcast um that would be very interesting. I, I I'm glad we got some breaking news during the pod. I've always wanted that. If only it was the actual trade and not just the, you know, the silent news that we've heard about for a while and kind of had a feeling what's going to happen. But you know, something is better than nothing. Um, Jasper, thank you for joining me for this edition of the Palace Pistons podcast. Uh, hopefully, something else comes down the pipeline, uh, and we hope that you'll be joining us. If and when it does, again, the Pistons have to make other moves. Uh, they got too many players. Uh, something is going to happen, and we hope that you will join us uh, next time, and we can break all of it down, all of it down. So, for my co-host Jasper Apollonia, I am Mike Angolano. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the Palace Pistons Podcast, part of the Believe Network, and we will see you all next time. 